So however you want to compose this is up to you. Um, remember that, you know, though we're doing, uh, we're doing eggs, so the form's very particular, right? We're still going to draw through. Right. So to make sure that you're drawing the whole egg form so that you can get around to that ideal, you know, silhouette that eggs have. Um, and that, that's an unforgiving sort of silhouette. But if you think about it, it's really useful because sort of people, muscles, they're all sort of like bits of eggs, stacked on bits of eggs, you know. Um, and then the fabric is there to kind of keep the eggs in place, yeah but also to provide uh, like linearity and, and contrast and overlap that you wouldn't normally get if you just put the eggs on, on a table, right? So I'll take this little section in my seat. Right? So if your paper were like this big, that's kind of what we'd be working with. Um, so again, what you're doing is you're wrapping those hemisphere lines around the egg. Starting from a little bit back and coming forward. If you can nail that, that's the main thing, right? That hemisphere line. So it may take some practice of just like doing those uh, shadow chord lines. And so I'm using the shadow chord to get that line wrapped around the edge. Okay. So um, if I start to differentiate a few of the uh, wrinkles in the fabric, that gives me um, some shadows to work with. So from here I can immediately begin doing the poster effect, right? And just dividing light and dark. Because um, the gesture and forms are basically done at this point. Now I can just go in and start. Laying down the laying down some shadow. don't have to decide exactly where the edge of the egg is just yet. So you can find it, lose it, bring it back, and so on. First things first, you know, we're just establishing the breakdown of light and shadow, right? Right. Um, 
Next I wanted to talk about like particular mark making techniques. So once you have the pattern down, then you can um, uh, start to actually use uh, line work to build up value and to show form at the same time, which is really powerful. And that's kind of what the, uh, the Renaissance artists did a lot. Um, you'll notice that the pattern on the, uh, on the fabric has like, you know, uh, a heavy texture in one direction and a lighter texture in the other direction, right? But you can see the warp and weft of the fabric pretty clearly. Most fabrics have some kind of texture like that. Um, at least woven fabrics, anyway. So you can start to use that texture uh, to help you with the, the line direction. So back here, uh, I see it pretty clearly that, that the fabric is kind of going like this, right? And then here, it starts to bend because the forms, the direction of the form is changing. Then it goes up and around and kind of comes down here, right? Maybe even curves some. And then here, I have that intersection of describing the form with uh, the form coming this way too. So that's why cross so I'm going to ignore the eggs for a bit. Here you kind of see little bits coming up here, but not going for very long. Here you kind of see them going this way and this way, evolving to do change direction like that and go back in space. Right. In the front here, I see a progression like this. And like this. A little patch of light, and then again, same progression. Similar one here. Slightly different angle though, right? And then actually kind of curving from here over. And you can do this um, all over the place, really. You know. There's something there. This is pretty dark, so I can kind of dig in a little more. And you can make straight and round. Remember, you can always go back, and if you get it, if you get it too dark, it's okay. You just pick up stuff, just push. And what's cool about that is it doesn't actually change the line work; uh, it just changes the bed. So um, here on this egg, this is pretty dark right here. See the form coming up, and then you can kind of see it. wrapping in this curvy way, at least in part. And if you come back into an area and you evolve the way you see those lines, that's okay. You just keep building it up. So uh, traditionally this would be done over many days, right? Um, like an HB pencil, something like that. You build up thousands and thousands and thousands of lines really softly, you know, and you um, 
the traditional there's a traditional angle too. Uh, if if you're in the French classical tradition, you're working you'd be working with a sixty degree angle, which is about like that. Um, things that would be considered uh, amateur hour traditionally would be lines that are different distances apart, like this. as well as lines that touch each other and lines that actually cross that are supposed to be parallel. Okay. Those are things that would be traditionally frowned upon but are fine now, it doesn't matter. Right? Another one is uh, making a mark on the return. Now on the return, as you're, as you're returning, you start making a mark. Yeah. That would be considered amateur. Michelangelo did it with intention, so I think it's okay. Um, and you can actually use that to kind of, if you have a form and you're trying to wrap around the form, you can do that. Okay. Because it could appear to be lines coming from behind the actual form. Um, you know, generally speaking, 90 degree angles are going to flatten, and these would all evolve and change, right? So you'd have a curve going this way. Then another one coming this way that bends around and goes next to a curve like that, and so on. So that kind of helps you. That can help you do an undulation. So we'll take um, this egg right here. You notice I have a hemisphere developed around here, right? And I'll exaggerate this for the purpose of instruction. It should not be that dark in the end, right? See it around this egg. So here, I'll, I'll go ahead and out. I'll go ahead and outline this egg. Though this is not what you should do, just so you see what I'm working with here. Okay. Okay. Now, I I can see that. This, I can see this hemisphere pretty clearly. The axis is going away from me slightly, so I know that this other crossing hemisphere, if I were to draw it in, would kind of go like this, come from back around. See it? So this gives me a hint as to how I could potentially build up the mark making techniques, right, with curves. I could do it with straight lines if I want it, but I don't have to. So um, from here over, I can just say, well, I'll just use this to create the shadow core. And I'll go across the shadow core to make sure that it blends a little bit. I'll draw over and into the fabric. And then I can go parallel to here, right? And then I can use uh, the side of the pencil just to deepen that value if I feel like it needs to be deepened. Now, in this quadrant, because I can actually see the end of the axis here. I may have to do a little bit this way, right? To make the back of that happen. But I can just kind of continue that idea of wrapping those lines around. And eventually I reach a point where the curves have to kind of counter each other which is sort of fun, right? How do I express that change of direction of the curves? So when you do that, the trick is keeping one thing consistent and one thing different, right? So I'm keeping these hemisphere lines consistent and I'm changing the direction of the ones across it, right? That way there's continuity and it sort of makes a little bit of sense. Um, 
can play around forever trying to get the, the value of this egg correct, right, in and of itself, and relative to the environment. But you want a little bit of value even over the, the highlight side so that you can come back and you can pop in that highlight, right? A really reflective bit. So that doesn't look, you can do better on the rendering, but I just wanted to exaggerate kind of what those, what those lines might look like. Just make sure one direction this way, turn the other direction this way. I know that's super ugly. No, it's not. Um, well, it is though. It's not what it, not really what, how you would actually develop it. So, if you're working here, you would build it up a little more with a little more subtlety. Um, Still find that core and just start. You know, what you really want to do is build up with the feather touch, right? Spend a lot of time just doing this. Value going. And so on. This is the proper way to build it up. You know, exaggerate the line work just so you can see it. How about with charcoal when it co comes out so dark? Same thing. Yeah. But charcoal, you're going to wind up doing more more work with uh, with this guy, the needed rubber. And then if it's too dark, and the trick to it is you push. If you need to make um, smaller value distinctions, you go over to an area where you don't need, where you have way too much, you pick it up on here, and then it will pick up less when you push, right? Because it's already picked up a bunch oh. on the same surface. But the trick to getting an egg to look like an egg and to look white is to deepen the background, right? So until you surround that egg with dark values, you're never gonna have, it's never you're never gonna be happy with the one you're gonna So yeah, back on this egg, real light. There's a little dark spot right here. Deep shadow. a lot of time and just play with what those mark making systems can do. And if you take it too far, just knead a rubber, push down. Um, with the kneaded rubber, don't do this. Just, just push. So that allows you to change the value without losing the quality of your mark. 